Do you want to know why I've been doing Zen meditation? Because this time, for this video to keep calm, I'm going to need help. Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. In this last period, I've been studying the topic of Samurai armor very deeply in order to expand and enlarge my understanding of this fascinating topic. Now, in order to do that, I've been reading books, of course, one of which is 280 pages long, mind you. I've been reading articles and also I have been watching videos. On a side note, not many videos about Samurai armor production and construction, to be honest, and I will be making one myself. But no whining, right? So, to cut a long story short, while I was looking for a video about Samurai armor, I stumbled upon this video. It's a video taken in a museum full of marvellous samurai armors, peculiar helmets, some of which are rather ominous to say the least. So, Metatron, you might ask. I'd appreciate the T pronounced that though. How on planet Mars can a video taken in an actual museum with a real professional museum curator have qualified for a debunking video on this channel, mate? What's wrong now? Well, you see, this time the problem is not the YouTube channel, it's not the YouTuber, nice lad he is. It's what the curator said. But enough about that, let's have a look together. Hey guys, it's Norm from Tessa.com. I'm at a museum today. This is the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. I'm here with Robert Singer, you're the curator of this fabulous exhibit we're in right now. Uh, Robert, what is this exhibit? The samurai wore these on procession. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This samurai armor is fantastic, isn't it? But we're not here for this, are we? Let's go on about this armor. Can you give us an example sure. of, of the piece? Sure. Here's a complete set of armor. Uh, you have the cuirass, the, the, the chest armor. It goes around the body. You have shoulder pads, which are really important to protect from arrows and even gunfire uh, and swords. And then you have this kind of skirt. Uh, sometimes they have iron mesh inside of the skirt, like the piece on the other side we'll be talking about in a second. And then you have arm guards, hand guards, and armored shoes. Uh, so it's pretty well encased. It's pretty light. It's only about 40 pounds. Oh. Whereas a set of Western armor, you know, looks like a tin can. You yeah. know, it's like uh, Wizard of Oz. That's like 100 pounds. You know, looks like a tin can. You know, looks like a tin can. You know, looks like a tin can. So those, those, those in, a, in a set of Western metal armor, you can't ride on a horse. You can ride on a horse. You can't get on the horse. You can't sit down. Old. Ah, uh, where do I even begin? Okay, okay. Oh, I think you know what I'm talking about. No, but seriously, if you have heart problems, don't look for the comment section on that video. You see, a lot of people were outraged by those words, literally. And as an arm and enthusiast, I can understand that. Because what he said is absolutely preposterous, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I still think that some people have exaggerated a little bit, because the comment section in that video right now is full of... <clears throat> Insults, abuses, taunts, scorn, affront, blasphemy, invective, and also threats and colourful death wishes for that museum curator. That was a mouthful. So, yeah, he got it wrong. Absolutely wrong. Completely wrong. And I will prove him wrong in a minute, but let's do that in a civilised way, shall we? <clears throat> Cup of tea, please. All right, now what he said about Samurai armor is right. So he knows his stuff about Samurai armor. Now some people in the comment section on that video actually pointed out the fact that he did not use any Japanese proper terminology for the Samurai components, for the Samurai armor components. Um, yeah, I would have done, I would have used Japanese terms in conjunction with English translation myself, but perhaps he didn't do it, not because he didn't know them, but because he didn't want to confuse his guests to, obviously is not an ex an armor expert i suppose he knows the terminology so again let's consider he knows it but just chose not to use it so don't be picky but the problem is that it's quite obvious that this bloke has never read one single page in his entire life about how western european late medieval european plate armor actually worked nor has he seen a video made by someone who did nor has he actually talked to someone who understands armor and that's because the things that he has been teaching in this video are actually completely debunked um, myths, very common myths and misconceptions that people who don't know anything about armor actually spread. 
And again, I've got nothing against the YouTuber Norm, I think his name is, because he's not an armor expert, so he's not able to spot whether something is a myth or whether something is based on reality and real historical accuracy. But the museum curator of a museum that actually specialized in armor, that is a little strange, isn't it? You see, I've got nothing against this man. Again, I make mistakes, people make mistakes, we all make mistakes every day, but ignoring this topic to the point of not realizing that what you're actually teaching to people, probably on a daily basis, is complete, utter nonsense. And I think, honestly, this is a good opportunity for all of us, perhaps me as a first person here, because I don't want to sound arrogant in this video, to learn a lifelong important message. If you don't know something, don't teach it. Although, in this video, it's actually quite clear that that's what he does. He teaches this. Because it's not like Norm, the YouTuber, actually brought it up and asked him to compare Western armor with European, uh, with Japanese armor. No, he did it himself, just out of the blue. Now, he describes late medieval plate armor as a tin can. Like the one in The Wizard of Odds. The reason why I'm assuming he's referring to late medieval armor is because throughout most of the Middle Ages, knights predominantly used mail. It is by 1420 that complete suits of armor were developed, because armor had to adapt to constantly changing weapons and warfare tactics. At the peak of its evolution, European armor reached an incredible level of artistic achievement. It was a triumph of technological achievement. This, the iconic suit of armor encasing the knight. Please spot the differences. Also, a battlefield suit of armor wouldn't weigh 100 pounds, like he says. If we look at most historical examples, even ignoring different styles, the general weight of a complete suit of armor is around 55 to 60 pounds, more or less and the weight is perfectly distributed on the body, with a cuirass mostly resting on the hips. In a battlefield suit of plate armor, a knight could walk, run, ride a horse, even jump on a horse, sit down, lie down, stand up, and of course, fight in it. What I think he's getting confused with is jousting armor, to be specific, specialized jousting armor of the 16th century. We know during the 1490s, Emperor Maximilian I invested a lot of time and effort into perfecting the sport of jousting. Heck, he was even nicknamed the last knight for that. Jousting divided in two separate styles, which were called Rennen and Stechen, and specialized armor was developed for them, called Rennzeug and Stachzeug, respectively. Jousting armor, namely specialized jousting armor produced in the late 15th to 16th century was heavier than a field armor and could weigh as much as 50 kilograms or even up to 110 pounds due to the fact that it was not intended for free combat it did not need to permit free movement in fact not only the harness would be heavy but some types of frog mouth helmets didn't even allow the wearer to move his neck the reason for that is that some forms of jousting had the decoration on the top of the helmet as a main target rather than the shield which meant a huge risk of being hit in the face with the lance full force. So the neck had to be stabilized and they had protected to the maximum extent possible. Hence field armors were a lot lighter and allowed complete mobility. In both cases though, whether he'd be wearing a field armor or a specialized jousting armor of the late 15th and 16th century, a knight could still ride his horse. He could get on a horse, perhaps with the help of a stool if needed, and could definitely sit on it. So his claim that knights couldn't sit on a horse is false whether it be a jousting armor or a battlefield armor. Of that, I'm absolutely adamant. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.